what up y'all i am back for another video so i haven't done a video in a few days today i am reviewing the killers game actually no i did a video yesterday i'm fucking stupid <laughs> so today the, the killers game i i watched this one a couple of weeks ago i well, i've been wanting to review but just things have been coming up got in the way so it took me a little bit so i figured let's just finally knock it out um i'm thinking of finally reviewing because i want to watch the sub like i mentioned yesterday i want to review before i review the substance i do want to watch it again because i think it's one of those movies i feel like i need to give a second watch before i just up and do a review and i do it this week but i think what i'm gonna do i'm gonna save it for next week i'm gonna drag it out because i already got some reviews set out this week so probably next week more than likely i'll probably be doing it <clears throat> probably next wednesday more than likely yeah, I'll do it next Wednesday, so, because I know Monday next week we're going to be doing the Halloween 2018 rewrite. I'm probably in that rewrite, I'm going to change the name. I'll just announce that right now. We're not calling it Halloween 28. That shit was stupid. So I'll go into that next week, and then next week would be Dark Knight Rises, because we're doing Dark Knight tomorrow. So Monday and Tuesday, I kind of got set already, so next Wednesday we'll do it. But the killer's game is so fun i remember i remember just um hearing about it because you know i watch wrestling so drew mcintyre was promoting it for a while and i saw a trailer for it and i'm like okay this looks kind of fun and it is it pretty much the the plot is batista plays joe flood he's a hit man um falls in love with uh this dancer who he sees at one of his uh i'll just say one of his hits who you see in the intro and it's a perf. It's probably my favorite um, Batista film. Like that's um, him as the main characters. I don't count Guardians because Guardians is like an ensemble. Though Knock at the Cabin's a close second. For a while, that was probably number one. But this one, he is so great at this. He's funny. He's witty. I'm like, man, you know, when Batista is able to show his personality, I think he can act. I don't necessarily think he's a bad actor. I just think, unfortunately. Sometimes he just gets typecast, especially after Guardians, where it was he has to always do these kind of. Basically, they want him to just play Drax and everything, and I really feel like that was holding Batista back for a while. It was just he always they always were like, "We want you to play fucking Drax." That's clearly what it was. They clearly wanted them to, him to play Drax, and I just think it hurt the film, to be honest. But overall, this one is great. Um, you even have a, I call her Rebel Moon chick, um, Sophia Batella. She's in <clears throat> shitty Rebel Moon, but in this, she's actually a good character. She's uh, Mariana, his love interest to, or no, Maze, sorry. Mariana's the fucking chick who does the hit. But So he agrees to go on a date with her. They go on a date, fall in love, but then he gets a headache. And then it turns out that because um, a doctor misdiagnosed him with some disease, so he put so to not to to have some basically money for Maze or Maisie. I think it's supposed to be Maisie. Yeah. Um. He puts a hit on himself, even though it turns out the doctor misdiagnosed him. So he breaks up with her, tries to call her to you know tell her that what he, how he really feels. But then, yeah, you get the call about the doctor's misdiagnosed, and basically, then pretty much the film is a bunch of assassins try to kill him. That's essentially the movie. And it is fun, man. The action, you know, the, the first action scene in, in his house where I don't, I'm not going to remember every assassin's name, but, uh, you know, um, these, there's a biker gang, this like Yakuza kind of gang. You had a, the McKenzie brothers, which one of them was Drew, who he's not in this movie a lot, but for the bit he is in, I would not mind seeing Drew in another film. He is funny as fuck in this, even though he's not in it a lot. It's the all around, like, you have Love Doll, which that's Terry Crews, who, one of my favorite Terry Crews movies. Like, and initially he doesn't agree to do the hit, and he's like another kind of big hit man, but he feels like the price is too low. But then it go when it goes up eventually, because at this point, um, 
Joe's like kind of killing everybody, so they up the price. Then there's Boat Dots. He's like this uh, kind of think of like a salsa dancer, but as an assassin. Then the Party Girls, who are these pretty much killer strippers. And they all try to claim the bounty. And that's essentially is the film. Like, I mean, you know, uh, at some point, obviously, Love Doll takes, um, kidnaps, uh, uh, Maisie. Um, and then they confront him at, uh, this house. And then we have a final face. So, like, it's a just all around final good film, you know. He eventually gets with Maisie, kills the bad guys, minus Love Doll, which I am happy about. I'm happy they don't kill off Terry Crews. He is fucking funny in this man, and it's one of those movies where it's it's not Guy Ritchie, but it has a Guy Ritchie feel about it. It'll mix with like Edgar Wright, Guy Ritchie and like Edgar Wright both made a movie together. This is what I feel like it would be. Some of the like the you know. The, the plot of like these assassins trying to kill each other and it's all around like I really this is why I wanted to review it because I like it was just a fun fucking film the action was great fun all around characters good soundtrack um kind of short and sweet it's not a long movie um like I said I think this is B Batista was really showed up like I thought there was a lot, couple of scenes where Batista was actually straight up funny in this but like legit funny not like the the funny where like it worked for like when like in Drax right when he played Drax and Guardians I felt like after a while the only humor Batista was allowed to show is basically he had to be Drax so it was actually kind of nice to see him be funny but not just be forced to play Drax again he's actually funny but in a different way even uh, Maisie, the love interest, is well done. And, um, and it's crazy because this is, I'm going to call it Rebel Moon shit because I've not seen the movie all the way through. But the bit I have seen, I've seen people like, I've seen the channel like roast it. And like, you know how like a lot of those channels they have a condensed version of the movie. So I saw a bit of the movie or a condensed version of it anyway. And it is fucking bad. So to see her come in this and actually showcase her acting skills is pretty fun. And even the way it ends, where she says, you know, like, keep being an assassin. I, I don't want a sequel, though. I, there, it, The way it ends, it could lead to a sequel, but I don't know if I'd want it. I, I feel like the point of the story is they want to kill him because of a misunderstanding. So, and all around a pretty fun cast, and it's a great movie, man. I, I had fun with it. I definitely want to watch it again. Um. And I felt like I needed to review it because I wanted to talk about something good. That's part of the reason I did not review Joker 2 <clears throat> or do a whole video on it. Because I was like, fuck that. I don't, I'd rather talk about something good and I actually like it, you know. I don't mind doing like reviewing, roasting bad new movies, but Joker was just kind of, Joker 2 is just so depressing that I'm like, I don't want to really recount it. I'm just like, it's bombing. I just wanted to get forgotten, so... But yeah, this is a good one. I very much recommend it. Even if you don't love Batista, I think this is one where he showcases his humor. You, if you love Terry Crews, you're going to love this movie. And I'm happy he doesn't get killed in the end. Um, fun fight scenes. They don't hold back on the gore either. Like, they... There are some fucked up... Drew gets impaled on a reindeer, uh, like a taxidermy reindeer. Like... Or deer. Or, I'll just say deer, not a reindeer. But, like, they don't hold back on the gore. Like, it's not gory in the sense of, like, obvious. It's kind of more comedic violence. But they do not hold back on the, the violence. Like, there is blood in the film. And the way Joe just kills all the other assassins. Like, the film does make it a point to show you that he is the elite of the elite of the assassins. The movie does point that out, so... Overall, um, I would probably give this one like a nine out of ten as a like kind of a comedy action film. <laughs> I think it's fucking great, but I also don't. I'm happy it doesn't go uber comedic to where it's just like nothing serious. It's like a ma it's a nice mix. So definitely recommend it. Um, I really did want to talk about it. So tomorrow the plan is to do the Dark Knight, which that's gonna be fun. I can't wait to do that one because. The Dark Knight was such a fun theater experience and just such a 
fun experience all around. There are some aspects that I don't think age well, but I overall still love the film. I still think it's iconic. You know, for me, it's... For a long time, Dark Knight was my favorite comic book film ever. Not now. Like, Watchmen, I think, is... Like, the Watchmen film has kind of eclipsed it, but Dark Knight's still really up there. Like, this is, like, the film that showed people, like, you can make almost, like, if you want to... I know people like to throw the word cinema around, right? But I think this is one where I think it it fits. You know? So, yeah. So that's going to be fun to talk about. Wednesday, like I said, I'll figure out, like, a slasher to review. Thursday, we're going to do Exorcist 3, since I did Exorcist 1 last year, and I'm skipping 2. And then Friday, the plan is to do Terrifier 3, if I see it on Friday. Anyways, guys, let's... Uh, Get into a. Uh, let's get into a. Uh, the killer's game. Also, subscribe to Pin Down Podcast. <coughs> Don't know yet if we're doing a stream on Saturday. We. Sh- I think it's 50-50, but I don't know yet. (laughs) I do not know yet, so I got to figure that out. But uh, I'll keep you guys posted on that. But (laughs) regardless, subscribe to Pin Down Podcast for... If you want to see me talk, like, raw or specific, like, wrestling reviews and stuff, that's where you'll see it. (laughs) So, I love the opening, like, where it's basically Batista doing a hit, and when he kills um, the person he's doing a hit on, and you do get a a couple of cool fight scenes where he takes out, like, his henchmen and stuff, (coughs) and then you see, I wish I saw this in theaters, but I just didn't have the opportunity, so I just watched it on the seas, because part of it, too, was I didn't know if this was going to be good or not, so I was like, that's kind of why. <clears throat> but um and uh we do get a cool um cool fight in the opening and this is where he sees Maisie for the first time and he manages to save her um and uh he kind of like follows her around but eventually runs into her at a dance class and she wants to like thank him um for so basically, she's the one who called the hit on uh, the guy, but she doesn't know he's a hitman kind of thing, right? And he then, uh, she gives him, like, her number in case she wants to go out, and he initially throws it up, and then he eventually kind of starts falling, you know, starting to fall for her, so she agrees to go on a date. They kind of start falling in love. Things seem fine. And, uh, so, oh, I forgot to mention, the start of the film, he gets a headache when he talks to her initially and runs off because, uh, turns out, and he works with this guy named V, he's, like, the head of this hitman, and it, basically, he's, uh, he, he's the man he works for, right? And I actually like that character, and I'm very much happy they didn't make him the bad guy, because I'm not gonna lie, that's what I thought was gonna happen, because that guy, I've seen him, he's, he, I've seen him play a bad guy a few times, that's why I was, like, Oh, he's going to probably turn on. But no, I'm happy he did. He kind of feels like his, I know it's not John Wick, but kind of like his Winston, right? It does have that feel a little bit. And Batista, I, Batista Joe is diagnosed with, I, I can't, I'm just going to say it, I can't read it out. Uh, I read like the, the plot on Wikipedia and it said the disease, but it's, I just don't, I can't really remember. It's, I'll just say some disease that basically was shut down his organs within three months so he's basically gonna die so he puts a hit out on himself so he can basically leave Maisie some money you know so she you know some basically you know 
So he puts the hit on himself, but V does not want to do it. So he goes to Mariana, who I guess is like, a, I don't know if she's a rival assassin or whatever. But she agrees to do it because she wants to kill Joe. Um, supposedly he killed her father. Um, that's why. Um, and Love Doll, who's a, probably another really good hitman. That she, I, I really love his introduction. The way he's just fucking a couple of bitches. Wakes up the next morning. He's just sleeping. And then he gets a call about the job. He initially turns it down because the money is like, I think it was two million was the, the offer. And he turned it down initially. Then a couple of this, uh, I forgot what the gang is called, but like this, I'll just kind of call them Yacht, like Japanese gang, um, takes the offer. And then these Hungarian brothers, who it's like a biker, they're, they're two bikers, um, agree to take the hit. But Batista, uh, I keep saying Batista, Joe breaks up with Maisie. Um, so, you know, he, cause he doesn't want to let her know what's actually happening. He then kind of regrets it and tries to leave her a message. And while this happens, he gets a call from the doctor. And and there's a mix. So he got the... Um, apparently, that diagnosis was for another patient, which that's like a big fuck-up. It, I can accept it. Yeah, that is a big fuck-up for that. That's kind of like convoluted for the plot to happen. But the movie even... The way the movie's shown everything, a lot of things are kind of over top in this film. So I can kind of accept that. It, if this film was trying to be, like, realistic, and, like, if it was, like, John Wick, you, you know, no, there's, like, over-the-top stuff in John Wick, but there's still a little bit, especially somewhat, there's still, an, even in, like, some of the later ones, there's still a little element of realism to it. To where, if there was a plot like that, I'd be like, okay, I, I don't buy that. But in a film like this, I can kind of accept it. It works, um... And at the end of the day, I mean, the movie has to happen. So I understand that there's some things you can't be too much nitpick on, you know. And so they try to, the initial, uh, the Japanese gang attack him first. And pretty much Joe takes him out pretty easily. And then he kills the biker gang. It's not really a gang. It's the, the biker brothers. Kills them pretty easily. And then Mariana ups the amount. Love Doll pretty much now agrees to do the job. Uh, the McKenzie brothers, um, the, uh, these two girls called the party girls, which are Ginny and I don't remember the other name, where uh, they're basically, and I love that you do get a little montage of them doing their thing. Like, because you do see Love Dog do a kill, like, earlier in the film. Then you see Botas, who's, like, this dancer who does the kills, which I do like that they do show off them doing hits. So it does show you their skills. You know, like, Botas is able to fight with the dance, like, he has music. He pretty much has music playing in his ears while he kills people. Like, I think that's kind of unique and it's funny. Uh, obviously, the party girls are strippers. They lure men in and just kill them pretty quickly. Um, <clears throat> and you see the McKenzie brothers do a hit. Like, it switches. Like, you get to actually see them do the kills, which is pretty fun. And pretty much, um, they go after Joe. Like, that's pretty much the film. Like, I love that it keeps the plot relatively simple. Love Doll, I guess, I don't remember how he figures out that uh, Joe has a girlfriend, but he did. He finds Maisie. Um, but I think while this happens, Joe tries to go to Maisie, you know, try to tell her everything, like, what's happening. And before he gets there, she gets kidnapped by uh, Love Doll. And I guess you kind of call him his sidekick. Um, who is just there for Love Doll to shut off, which I, I do love. Like, this film is actually funny. Like, the banter is well done. That's why I was saying, like, it does, it does, I don't know if, whoever directed this movie, I don't know if he was, tr if he was inspired by a little bit by, like, Edgar Wright style. Very much, more, I would say more Edgar Wright now that I'm thinking about it, more Edgar Wright than, um, Guy Ritchie. But I do think there's a little Guy Ritchie. More of, like, like this, um, heist movies, not like the, not, um, not more of his, like, movies that are more based on, like, like, The Gentleman and stuff like that, where it's more British. Like, it's not that, I'm talking about more like the heist style and the banter. Because there, there is a little bit of good banter, but definitely more Edgar Wright. I would, now that I'm thinking, I think it's more Edgar Wright. It has that kind of style of writing. Um, like, yeah. 
lucky number slept. And like this doesn't have that feel, right? Um, but I do think um it is up there. Like it has that kind of style. And pretty much um Joe um goes to uh I don't know what house he goes to, but it's like a you know, like a mansion. Um I think it's like a like he has a, it's like a hideout he has. And uh, pretty much all the assassins go there. Initially, um, the McKenzie brothers arrive. He kills them pretty easily. Um, this is where you get Drew, which Drew was straight, man. You know, I'm a big Drew McIntyre, obviously, fan in terms of his wrestling, him as a wrestler. But I do love him in this movie. He's funny. I think he has physical presence, so... I don't think he'll be like a lead actor like a Batista. Maybe he will down those. I think he is a great actor in terms of in the, as a wrestler. But who knows? Maybe one day Hollywood might see it and we will see him as a lead. But I think right now I can see him being like a heavy in a movie and have like a henchman role. Maybe in a more serious action film. I think he'd work in like an action film where you just throw him in like a fucking fight scene. And I, yeah, Scott Atkins I think is the other brother. Yes, I forgot to mention, yeah, Scott Atkins is in this. Like, it's a fucking all-around good cast. So he takes him out. Uh, Flood then ends up killing... Um, killing um, Botas. Then the party girls, by uh, he blows them up. Then Love Doll calls, calls Joe out there. He basically has his girlfriend who, while this is happening, the, the, she manages to fool the psychic and um escape from him and while this happens mariana sends a death squad just to kill everybody well, not everybody but like kill joe so joe manages to take him out um oh he manages to get away when the the death squad shows up love doll gets mad he ups the price and then he and um Oh no, she uh, manages to save him, uh, Maisie. She manages to save him. He then tells her everything. They kind of start falling in love again. They go to a church. They're about to get married. And then that's when the death squad shows up um, along with Love Doll. So him and Love Doll, in a way, kind of do team up for a second because Love Doll starts killing um, the death squad. But uh, the main guy has the, uh, basically, I'll just say, he has. Joe dead to rights, and then Maisie just blows his fucking head off, and it does like turn go into like a watermelon. So it they don't hold back on the violence. I will say that. And uh, while this happens, I think some kind of explosion happens. Love doll manages to get under a pillar, but he's still alive. Which I am happy they leave him alive. Batiste, <laughs> I love that flush sleeps in there. And fucking <laughs> Love dolls is talking shit like Terry Crews. I love Terry Crews as an actor. He's just funny. But he can also play a little bit of serious. I mean, in, in the Expendables movies, he had his serious moments. But he knows how to have fun. Like, even in an action film. And I thought he was fucking funny in this. I I really thought he was great. As, even with the, um, his little sidekick, who he kind of disappears at this point. But he was fucking good in this. So he and Maisie, uh, turns out she ends up pregnant. And because she realizes how much money he makes, what they need to raise a baby, she basically just can't keep assassin uh, becoming being assassin so he can make money. So in a way, it does kind of leave it open for a sequel, but I'm hoping not. I don't really see how I can do a sequel. As much as I like this movie, I don't think it needs one. I think this is a nice little one-off, little funny movie. Because the whole movie is basically about him. They think he's sick, so he puts a hit on himself, but he got a because of wrong information and he can't undo the hit oh i forgot to mention mariana gets killed by v because she broke the rule so kind of like similar if you remember when winston killed adriana palicki in the first john wick movie because she broke the rules so he kills her so kind of thing so it does you could tell there's a little bit of definitely like a john wick i forgot i should have mentioned that there's like john wick inspiration but it's done more with comedy because obviously John Wick is straight up serious. There's little bits of moment of humor in those movies, but largely I would say they're kind of played straight, you know. And yeah, man, I, I really loved Batista in this. I thought he was funny, but he knew how to play serious. Um, all around fun cast. 
good premise, kind of interesting premise too. Um, Sophia Batella actually got to showcase her being an actor because I felt like it. You could tell with Rebel Moon. I haven't seen the whole thing. Those Rebel Moon movies. You could tell she was held back. It's more of the plot. Like it's not really her. Because I feel like in this. Because in that movie, she plays like the prototypical kind of like, I guess you want to say Mary Sue, who's just good at everything, who's also just very boring and just has no personality. Also has to just act like a fucking dude. In this, she's feminine, but she does have moments of fighting. Obviously, she has muscle. You can tell. You can still tell she has the rebel moon muscle. So, but she also is able to show her feminine. So she's also funny. She also has, like, personality in this film. Like, so it's, like, it's just a matter of directing it. So I thought she was good. And I actually thought her and uh, Batista had nice chemistry, had good chemistry together. Terry Crews was awesome. I thought um, just all around the, in, the different assassins were all great. I love, like, that little montage of each of them doing their hits before they get, in, you know, added to the story. You know, and the whole story just itself, this guy gets, you know, gets misdiagnosed with this sickness who thinks he's dying, but to hit on himself, but now he can't undo it because of a fuck up. And now all these assassins are after him. It's just a simple plot, you know? So I very much recommend it if you've not seen it. If you love action, you just, <clears throat> like, I personally think this is my favorite Batista movie, not as not counting Guardians, you know. And more as like him as a lead, because him and Guardians, it's an ensemble. Drax does have a lot of moments, but you would ar there's a you can almost argue if there is a main character is Peter Quill in those movies. So if we're gonna go Batista led, like where he's the lead, or even like Night Knock at the Cabin, you know he's like the villain in that kind of I still kind of count that him as that's his film still. So I would say this is his best. Though Knock of the Cabin is close. But he, I think when the plot actually lets him do stuff and not just, A, just play basically Drax and everything. Because there are just some movies where he just played Drax and everything. They were like, just be Drax. And it just, there are some movies that, where he did that. I can't think of the names, but because there's, but there, uh, there was, there's this one he did with this little girl. But I, I thought the movie itself was fine. I can't think of the name right now, but it's like spy something, I think. And the movie itself wasn't bad, but he straight up was Drax in it. It was the same kind of humor. I thought it kind of bogged it down. I thought Batista's humor in this is much better. And I get it. That one's a bit more like lighthearted. It's not as obviously it's not going to be a lot of blood and gore. It's more... I don't think, I don't remember if that one was rated R or not. I think that one, because obviously they're a little girl. I would say I think that one's PG-13. So it's more PG-13 style humor. But I do think in this, he got to like, you know, showcase different sides of his character. So I overall like this movie. Probably one of my favorite films of the year. It's all, It's probably almost like, if I had a top 10, it'd probably be the 10. At least 10 or 9 up for sure. Favorite film this year. This is this one's really good. Um, that's all I can really say. It's not a lot to dissect. It's a very straightforward plot. So, yeah. So, nine out of ten. Tomorrow I will be reviewing the Dark Knight, which that's gonna be fun to talk about. I mean, Heath Ledger. Not my favorite version of the Joker. Because for me, it's still Jack Nicholson, just because he's more closer to the comics, but. Ledger's performance is legendary in this film. That interrogation scene is so iconic. Like, that was... Seeing that in the theater was a fucking experience, man. Aaron Eckhart as Two-Face, even though I felt like I really wish we got a little bit more of him, he was really good. The only thing, if I had one negative, I don't love that the way they have Cillian Murphy back as Scarecrow and he's just in the opening, and he just gets arrested. I'm like, that's the most, Scarecrow is like a big Batman villain. Especially if he, at the time, no, to be fair, this was pre-Arkham. I was going to mention the Arkham games, but I'm like, 
well, yeah, Arkham Knight, or the first Arkham didn't come out until a year after this film. So, but even then, I still feel like Scorpion was, Scorpion, Scarecrow was a big deal, like, Batman villain, and it felt like, because even, like, because he was a red herring in Batman Begins, and in this, he's just in the opening, and he just gets arrested. It's like, okay. I get it. He wasn't the main villain, but I think he could have did more with him. I've always felt like he was a little, especially because Silly Murphy's a really good actor, so. But Ledger's performance, that final act, the, that whole boat sequence is so good. I know some people have kind of poked holes in it, and I don't necessarily disagree with some of the criticisms of that scene, but take all that out. That scene is just so well acted. Even from, like, just the passengers, like, the boat with the, the prisoners, and the boat with the, I guess you could say, regular people, you know, was so well done, and then Ledger on the fucking speaker, you know, or the scene where uh, Ledger just, uh, probably one of my favorite Ledger scenes is, is it, is it obviously the introduction? That opening introduction is so fucking iconic, and then you get the reveal that he's the one in the mask. Yeah, I can't wait to talk about this film tomorrow. So, um, other than that, watch Killer's Game, pin down podcast, subscribe to that, and yeah. Other than that, I'm going to get ready to call it here. Killer's Game is great. I really definitely recommend this one. This one, I think you guys will enjoy it. It's funny. has really good action. Yeah. Other than that, guys, I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.